Hi, I'm Travis. Hi, I'm Seth. And we're kind of the living example of U equals U. Can you guess which one of us has HIV? Don't Let's ask. not. Don't ask. Let's not. <laughs> um, we're here today to talk about, uh, oh wow, thanks. Um, our relationship. So I actually, I've been living with HIV for uh, four years now, and we've been together for three and a half, and uh, somehow he doesn't have HIV. How did that happen? I kissed you. <laughs> So the truth is I'm on uh, one medication, I'm on, I take it daily, and it makes me unable to transmit the virus, and therefore my partner doesn't really have to worry about it. He doesn't even really need to worry about taking PrEP, though if it made him feel comfortable, he could. Yeah, I guess I can talk to my healthcare professional, who doesn't know much about HIV at all, but Such go to my PrEP place. clinic and talk to them about my treatment options but it's been really lovely knowing what U equals U means. Yeah, and it's so important actually because, uh, you know, one of the topics I kind of wanted to touch on today is like who needs to know about U equals U, and I think a lot of times like we do focus on uh, people that are HIV negative because they absolutely do need to know about U equals U uh, to stop sort of uh, the stigma and, and uh, making everyone feel uncomfortable and themselves feeling uncomfortable in uh, sexual situations, but it's also important for people living with HIV to believe in it and, and to know that it, it's, it's the truth and we're a great example of that. Um, you know, like for the longest time, I felt like um, my uh, wellness and everyone else's wellness was suddenly my responsibility, not just my own. I had to take care of everyone else. I had to be an educator for everyone else. But I also think it's everyone's responsibility to, to be educated and to be their own best health advocate. I will say, when you talk about being people's educators, when I go to a uh, a physician, they sometimes don't know even what PrEP is. So when I know in my experience I was asking questions about it and about my sexual health, I was not getting accurate answers or just no answers at all. So it's like I have to almost find a doctor that is educated in it. So like they don't educate all of them on... It's a great point. It's also super important that doctors are aware of U equals U and understand it properly. There's so much information every day, there's you know, new advancement or more knowledge that we're gaining and it's important for them to be at the forefront of that, but unfortunately that isn't always the case and we have to be our own best health advocate. I know that like for me, I'm very lucky with the clinic that I go to and, and they're very, very specialized in HIV, um, but a lot of places that isn't the case. What and if you're from like a small town, would there be something that someone from a small town or someone that didn't have access to a physician would be able to access? Absolutely. There's uh, programs like ones that the CBRC does. There's KD, which is an HIV and hepatitis uh, information website. All the information is actually out there. It's just that people don't bother to access it. They want it to be someone else's job. They want to just have their doctor tell them, oh, hi, Molly. <laughs> um, and instead of seeking out the knowledge themselves, I think like for me, what U equals U means uh, to me is that um, I'm taking the best care I can of myself and I'm on top of my, my wellness and I have the freedom to uh, have sex how I want. What does it mean to you? Ooh, I like that. Uh, well, for me, um, it's nice to know that you're taken care of medically and that you're on medication that can keep you healthy and happy and have a physician and a team that can check in on you and that you can check in with. Um, and it makes me feel, yeah, I mean, I don't, I just feel supported, I guess, by you because you know so much. I do treat you like an educator. Sorry. Happy to be, you're really cute, so I'll do it. I'll do it <laughs> I do, you. but I will say that I have got some funky info from different healthcare professionals. So I, I know I've come to you with like some rando stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I have to do like an educator. Um, and I think the more I take part in um, sex, with me? sex with you and just overall reading and um, participating. And I know I participated with um, some aid advocacy, aid advocacy. Um, programming here in Toronto and just being part of it was just, you know, 
important for my for my knowledge. Mm. And it, when you empower yourself with knowledge, or I, you know, I empower myself not not you specifically. When one empowers himself with knowledge, you have the ability to empower others with that knowledge as well. And I agree. Like I, when I went to the hospital for my surgery, like there, there was so much confusion around my HIV status and my medication and stuff like that. So they, people, people don't always know, and um, even though they should. Yeah. Okay, Seth. How has U equals U impacted your life? Yeah. Well, one seeing you be an advocate for it is super, super hot. So it just affected me in the way that I love someone that's so smart. And, oh, sorry. Um, for me. I have a few autoimmune issues, diseases that I deal with, so I get um, uh, blood work and things checked out. And for me, PrEP was something that was going to add to the list of pills um, that I'm already on. And so my healthcare professional uh, and I have chosen a pathway for me uh, in line with U equals U. So, so I, I hope my liver is a little bit happier now um, because of you equals you. And I, I didn't know that until I met you. I love that. Yeah, I think, yeah, for me it's kind of similar. Like it's impacted my life in a way that I think, you know, in past relationships and stuff like that, when, when things would go wrong, I'd have so much panic about it. And then now knowing and then just seeing the proof in my own lived experience, in our own lived experience, um, it's kind of changed my opinion of self, my opinion of uh, everyone's public safety. I feel like um, when you get diagnosed a lot of times, like because it's like a thing that gets reported to government and, and all these different things, you start to feel like you're like this sick one and, and the, of a problem and a disease vector. You often get kind of treated like that as opposed to a person and they're getting in on the video. <laughs> Meet these Goldines guys. Um, but uh, with U equals U, I feel like empowered by um, the fact that I, uh, and knowing that I, I um, I'm not a public health risk at everything I do. And um, it's kind of cha shaped and changed my opinion of self because uh, it was a very difficult coming to terms with the fact that I was HIV positive. Yeah, you're a warrior. <laughs> Y'all warriors out there. Tough bitch. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you have the tools. And I'm thank goddess for science. I'm excited that more science is coming out and that more educational stuff is coming out and more access and the internet, thank God. Yeah, we and gotta And get... I hope one day prep is free in Canada. Yeah, completely free everywhere, all the time, including also uh, treatment. Treatment as prevention and treatment for people that are living with HIV. But that would be nice for them too. Yeah. That'd be, you know what? It'd be really let's nice. Start, <laughs> let's just have treatment and just all of it would be really nice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think the biggest point of view, plus you, the importance of it is that access changes everything. A access is what will actually lead to an HIV free generation, which has been promised, you know, many times, multiple years, deadlines, and we've just missed every single one because it's not accessible. People get sort of lost in the fray and fall through the cracks so easily and it's um, not, in, with all the stigma, not an easy thing to want to, to know about yourself all the time. So for someone that is just getting in a relationship or going on a date with someone that is HIV positive, is it okay for them to ask questions or so they just kind of like let it flow from the other side? Oh, I think absolutely. We have to be used to answering questions because we ask them all the time. I think it's like, be conscious of the fact that you don't know where you're meeting up with this person like uh, in, in their life, in their journey of um, sort of becoming comfortable with this new version of themselves, with their diagnosis and stuff like that. So being really kind and offering a lot of kindness and, and doing your own research and showing that you care is really, all that it takes to have that conversation be an easy one versus I think, um, you know, if it comes up the wrong way or, or um, it becomes about, like, it's, a, it's also about trust. You know, you're trusting that people are taking care of their health as best they can. And you're trusting that you can ask the question and you're you're trusting that they will give you the, the uh, accurate information. I feel really lucky to ask. It was quite easy. Yeah. 
All right, I, do you have anything else to say to wrap this up? I feel like we've, we've done our due diligence. Um, yeah, I'm just excited to share our you equals you story with everyone. And I feel very kind of like blessed that I get to date someone like you. Stop, I feel blessed to date someone like you. And I'm really grateful for the CDRC for giving us an opportunity to talk about this and spread awareness as well. And thank you to all the birds. Yes. That are taking part. Woohoo! We, we love we love the sound effects. We love the, the almost crashing to our face. Woo. Oh my god, that's blueberry by the way. She's she's a new addition. Or he. He. Well, who cares? Let birds. them be whoever they want to be. They're birds. Let them let them bird out. Yeah, let them have their cloaca and, and rock it out. <laughs> okay, well we're signing off. <laughs>